Alright, let's talk about Stranger Things 4. Pretty damn good, I must say. Stranger Things 4. Pretty dang spicy. Of course, there was like, like a, like a couple things I feel like they could have done better in the finale. But overall, it was a pretty damn good experience. Like, mmm. Like, the moment when, like, you bite into, like, you bite into a cookie, and <laughs> you haven't eaten that cookie in a very long time, so you eat that cookie, and you're just like, oh. Oh, yeah. Now, upon first watching Stranger Things 4, my first thing was like, alright, what are they gonna do differently this time? What is going to make this, like, warranted such, like, an epic, like, two-volume kind of thing? What are they gonna do differently? First, I'm like, okay, I want Mind Flare. That was one of the things I wanted. And I got Vecna. Now, upon first experiencing Vecna, I'm just like, okay. I mean... I don't, I, at first I was not really digging, like, the design of Vecna, like, of course he's like, he's all gory and bloody and just, I guess, kind of creepy, but it, it just felt too human for me, it just didn't feel like, or like a real Stranger Things, like, villain or anything, but, like, upon, like, watching the first volume, like, you get a sense of who he is, who his character is, and like, you're just like, okay, this like, Vecna guy has like an actual character, he has a backstory, like, you get connected to the character, and you're just like, alright, I'm really digging this Vecna thing, and it gives a, like a whole more menacing kind of feel, feel to Vecna, and it's great, it's like actually so well done. And of course, the stuff with Eleven and Vecna, it was, it was fantastic, it was just, I loved it. So, basically my, my main thing with, with Season 4 was I wanted it to be crazy, off the hook, just absolutely, like, nuts. Like, nuts than the series is, more nuts than the whole entire series combined. And, why I don't say we completely accomplished that, I'd say they still pretty, pretty damn good job of making it nuts. Like, the whole, like, Vecna, kind of like, you know, you know the scene where it's like you lift them up and you just kind of crack those bones? That was pretty messed up. Like, you gotta admit, that was pretty messed up. And they, oh, like, the way they just kind of, like, meshed, just the seemingly random killing of a few of like three teenagers it's so meshed well with the, like the plan of that guy and he's just oh it's beautiful which brings me to my next point perfect segue spoilers max's death but also kind of a revival it's it's weird go into more detail but like Again, the scene was so masterfully done. Like, this whole time you're thinking, is Max gonna die? Is she gonna die? And it's probably set up in, like, the fourth episode, where Max literally almost dies once. So it's like, are they really gonna, like, commit her death? Are they gonna do it? Are they gonna do it? So this whole time, when Megna's trying to take Max, you're just, like, kind of fearing for her life. And they get to the point where Vecna is about to get Max, this is like the first part in the snowball scene, and you know, Eleven shows up, and I'm like, okay, okay, she's not gonna, she's not gonna die, at least not yet. Then like, you know, they have a battle, you know, and, um, Vecna's, you know, Vecna's winning over Eleven, of course they have that scene where Mike just like, you gotta fight my man, or my, my girl, <laughs> and, yeah. What am I trying to say? <laughs> so Eleven, yo, untangles herself from from the 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 Vagina vine. I don't know what the freaking call the freaking vine thing is. And you know, um, Eleven's about to defeat 
uh, Vecna. And the thing is that Vecna is already like killing Max in the process. So just merely is Eleven able to stop Vecna before he fully kills Max. And then they defeat well they defeat Vecna for now, he's still alive and he's just hurting. They defeat Vecna. And then they show Max. Pretty damn hurt. She, she, I'm assuming she's blind now. If she, you, you, you know, we'll get to it. it. She just, all of her bolts are just pretty much broken, which is pretty messed up. And this whole entire time, you're thinking, oh man, is Max gonna live? Is Max gonna live? You're not thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Vecna wanted to kill Max to accomplish his plan. So if Max dies, then what happens? So Max dies. And you're like, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking, oh no, Max just died. No! Like, it hits you. And then the, the freaking clock is just like, bang, bang, boom, boom. And that's where everything just freaking hits hard. I mean, like, really freaking hard. Begna's plan is accomplished, and it creates this just... It connects the four gates together to create this huge kind of rift in the ground in Hawkins, and it just... That part blew my mind. That part was just... Whoa. And then they do this really weird thing where it's just like, Alright, now that we showed you that, let's not show you what's gonna happen, and we're just gonna skip two days later. Like, this is my main problem with finale, was that part, where they kind of just typed up that whole entire thing that was gonna happen, and then they finally did it, and they just kind of skipped two days later, of like, why, what? And they played it off to like, oh yeah, it was just an earthquake, it was just an earthquake, and you're just like, wait a minute. But I thought that when the rift opened, all the monsters were gonna come in, and there's gonna be like apocalypse finale stuff. And you're just like, <sighs> at least for me, like that's what I thought was gonna happen. But no, it just kind of just stops happening. What? And then, thankfully, at the end of the episode, they actually do show the rift and you know, basically the Upside Down coming into the real world, Hawkins and everything. So I'm like, okay, did the Rift move or something? Did, it, did the- because Max does eventually- like, she is alive now, but she's like in like a coma that she might never awake from. So I'm assuming that since she's alive now, I guess that's what like stopped from all the monsters from the Upside Down from getting into the real world? But it was just so weird! I'm just like, why? Why are we two days later? But anyway, like, all all the... Almost all the loose ends were wrapped up from the season. Except for the ones that are probably gonna you know, continue in season 5, like, stuff with Ramen and her le being a lesbian, and, uh... Steve and Nancy. You know, that stuff. And while I don't really care too much about the romance stuff, in the show, it's still it's still pretty good. Like it, it's it's still not bad. It just did feel as strong in this season, in my opinion. I don't know. There's just something about it. Just felt kind of Netflix drama cliche, but of course mixed in with the horror and the you know natural feel of strange things. It was fine. It was, it was fine. And then okay, next thing, Eddie. Amazing character. I loved Eddie. Eddie was amazing. I think Eddie probably was my favorite character because he's kind of just like he's kind of just this good-natured lad. Like the first aspect of him, the first time you kind of glance at him, you get this kind of bad guy kind of like mm, I don't trust him kind of eyes. But uh, literally upon like the first scene with him. It's like, okay, this I kinda like this guy. This guy's fun, this guy's energetic, this guy is like actually pretty 
good dude. You know? And it, I guess it kind of fits with the whole thing of like people kind of misjudging him. You know, because everybody thinks he, he's killing teenagers. But upon close, close inspection, you know that he would never do that. Yeah, so throughout the whole entire season, he constantly just like, man, I've just been I've just been running away. I need to, you know, I just can't help it, man. It, it's just my thing. I have to run away. You know? And then at the, the final episode, you know, Dustin and Eddie, they have to, you know, get, get rid of the bats. They have to distract the bats long enough for, you know, the plan, Max's plan or whatever, to come into fruition and actually be accomplished. And the way, the way they pulled it off was really, I think it was really good. You know, we got to do like song, like a rock song, which was pretty cool. Not as cool as uh, Never Any Story. I, I like that one better, but still, it was, I really like it. So Eddie, he, he's like, no, this time I'm not going to run away. This time I'm going to face, I'm going to distract them from longer, that I am going and pick this on like a champ. It was just, mm. this Eddie just like no, just just no, just 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 just, just no. And then this thing comes after him, you know, and he gets hurt and hurt in the process. And I think it's really sweet. Like again, the way this and Eddie's relationship was portrayed in, in the season was I'm sure it was, it was also a really good aspect of the season in my opinion. We just get like, ah, oh, you're just so, such good bros, and it's amazing. It's so good. The way Dustin would just, just selflessly just, upon first instinct, immediately go back into the Upside Down. Just, like, to help any, and just... It was great, it was absolutely amazing. Just, top tier. Then you had the, the Rush Bloodline, which honestly I think was probably one of my favorite parts of this season was the Russian part. Like, you know, Joyce, Murray, and they want to go and uh, they want to go save Hopper. You know, and you have this new, these new two Russian characters. You have Yuri Enzo? No, it's not Enzo. I forgot the name of the other guy, but like, of course they're actually they're pretty good they're pretty damn good characters. Especially the guy the name I can't remember. Oh, it, first of all, let's talk about let's talk about Yuri. Yuri, like all this time, you just get get this like slack off, kind of just funny man, doesn't really care that much about anything kind of vibe, until like you, you, he gets put in danger and he immediately just loses all of his demeanor and just is like okay, 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 I'll do whatever you say. Like he feels like. He, he acts like this man who's just like on top, just like, yeah, I'm the man, you're not the man, I'm the man. I can trick you whenever I want, I'm, I'm the lead, I'm the weasel here. And it just, immediately after, just like a gun comes up and you're just like, oh, uh, I didn't mean whatever I said, I'm sorry, man, bro. And it's portrayed really well throughout the whole entire season, until like the final episode. Where, you know, Yuri gets called out for being a coward. You know, and they actually, like, they wrapped up his character like, pretty nicely. You could argue that that it was kind of felt a little bit out of nowhere. Like, upon watching the series, I kind of thought, eh, it might be a little bit out of nowhere. But I, I would probably have to rewatch the series with that in mind to, like, fully, like, like, actually confirm my thoughts on that. But also the line that just like, I've heard great about it, the peanut butter bandit. That once he like did something very, very great. I don't remember what it was though. I'm just like, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that kinda that line kinda came out of nowhere. But it's still it, it's it's not really much. It, it Sure. And he had the arc of the <laughs> With the guy with Hopper and the other guy, which I loved a lot, just seeing the relationship grow. <laughs> just, just again, 
Mm. Fantastic. Absolutely. Awesome. And then, and then, um, in the finale, in the finale, he does kind of take a back seat. I will maybe kind of like take a little, little bit of a back seat, but still, he's there and it's fine. And the, I love how like um, how they had like um, the Russian, like the Russian prison, and how they're like capturing. Like they, I'm assuming they had a gate or some sort, or, or else how would they get the monsters? So they have they have the demogorgons and they're and the demogorgons and they're basically like capturing them or something. They're doing something with them. They're like experimenting on them or something. There was a scene where they're literally like are dissecting the creature. Well, there's a guy not dissecting the creature, but it's shown that the creature inside they're like open, and you can tell that like they're dissecting. It. And I oh I just love how like. Where they rescue, finally rescue Hopper, and the the, the first Demogorgon like escapes, and then like so they then escape and they realize okay, it's a hive mind, so we gotta go back, we gotta you know light them on the fire, and then they come back and just like the monsters are just break break broken out and it's just like mm, this is some real good stuff right here. Oh gosh. Fear has been installed into my body. It's great. I also love how like they had particles there. Like that is that Yan. No, there is no doubt in my mind that that right there is part of the mind flare. And what sucks here is that they didn't really do anything with the mind flare in that Russian facility. Like you just like, like there's a line where just like, what did what did what did the particle thing do? And it just like, it went into our bodies or something like that. And they didn't, they didn't really build off of that. Which I thought kind of like, just like, oh man, really? You didn't build off of that? Why did you not build off of that? But still, it, it was it was fine. it was fine. I do feel like they could have like focused a little bit more on the Russian scenes because it felt like it felt like it didn't get too much. Like out of all the arcs ever in the series, I felt like that one had like the least amount of time spent on it. Especially like in the finale, like you have like twenty, maybe thirty minute gaps of just like. Well, actually, I don't know. How Time, but it felt like a long time with those gaps, the, the, like in between those gaps, I'm not having the Russian art. And it kind of just like, it, it was kind of just like, alright, Hopper goes to a demodog and he gets, you know, hive mind. We all know that he's there, and he kind of he kind of just lures the demodog into the this one specific area. And since the high mind, every one of the demogorgons or demogorgons that's there just kind of, you know, goes over there. And so, Burry with the flamethrower is gonna, you know, is gonna fire them up. He's gonna fire them up. And yeah! So then, they all come. And Murray lights him on fire. Okay, yeah, that's expect now. Good. And then, you know, the one Demogorg is alive, and Hopper just kind of, you know, just grabs his sword and just kind of slices his arm off and its head off, which is poor as frick. But, I, but still, it doesn't didn't really feel like he really did much. It sounds like lead. Lead the demo dog, them demo demo guys, and do that one thing and light them on fire. And also another thing, the timeline, the, the timeline, or you'll get what I mean by it in a second. It felt a little weird. Like you have like the the this one scene where Nancy, Steve, and Robin are going up, you know, to go. They're in the haunted house. They're in Vecna's house, and they're going to you know. Execute the next phase of the plan, and they're gonna defeat Vecna. 
But if it gets it gets sported because you know somebody steps on the vine or I forgot what happened. Something something happens with the with the Vecna vines, and they're starting to get strangled by the vines, and they're basically like strangled there for like I don't know over thirty minutes. <laughs> they're just kind of there for like thirty minutes. And it, it was a little weird, but still I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's still not too bad. It wasn't that bad, really. And then you had the... Um... What was... My brain is going numb. Okay, so... Overall thoughts in the series. I loved it. I thought it was great. Did it love live up to the hype? That of this season, that everybody was waiting for a new season, and it was just this big, humongous season. Yeah, yeah, I would say it lives up to the hype. You know, also, Vecna and the Mind Flare, pretty damn cool. Did it live up to my hype, though? I would say, not exactly. Like, of course, it was a grand season and everything, I, I, of course, I loved it, but... I felt like it could have been crazy. But the reason why I'm not really disappointed is because it felt kind of like a season one. It felt more like a build up to the next season rather than just like a season on its own. Well, of course it was a build up to the next season. Can't want you, you know. But like, you, you had season one, which only had the Demogorgon. And then season two picked it up a notch. We're just like, okay, this is where the Demogorgon came to be, and this is like the true, actual main villain antagonist. And they kind of did the same thing, where like Vecna is kind of like the Demogorgon. And then in season five, they're gonna, include, they're probably they're obviously gonna include the Mind Flayer, and they're just gonna go absolutely bonkers, kill bonker walkers, and it's gonna be like, hmm. That's basically why I wasn't really disappointed in any really anything this season had to offer, because it was basically for like a season one. Like, kind of back to its roots, but like just on a much grander scale. And it was great. It was it was fantastic. I still find it weird that it was loose in two volumes. Like it was still only nine episodes, which there is a season that is nine episodes, which was season two. But like still, even before Volume 2 came out, it was still, like, the longest season. In, like, two and a half hours for the night. That's fantastic, bro! That's amazing! But it still feels kind of weird that they just kind of, like, waited, like, you had to wait, like, a month just to get two new episodes. Like, it, to me, it just felt like kind of Netflix being marketing guys, and like, haha, you gotta wait for the next two episodes instead of just releasing it all together. I felt like that would have been a lot better. Because it, it, if you do that, it just provides like kind of a, a disconnect. Like when you're first, when you're watching the seventh episode, you get you got really hyped and you're just like, oh man, what's gonna happen next? And you wanna keep watching. And then, you know, when you wait a month, that kind of dies down a little bit. So you're not as, you're not really like, you're still very hyped, of course, to watch the next couple episodes. But I feel like it could have been better in like just one sitting. You know, just a nine episode binge. You know, like a week binge or something. But it's still fine. Overall, season four, fantastic. Loved it. Can't wait for season five. Lord help us all if it takes us three if it takes three years for this one to come out. It won't though, which I'm very happy for. And yeah. Woo!